Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and today we're going to be looking at the Blackview A60. So this is the cheapest Android phone I've seen to date with a 6 inch screen. Um, like I said, it's £50, it ranges between 50 and 60 but normally it's on offer for £60. And we can see here, for that money, you're getting a 6 inch screen, water drop screen as they call it. You get a gig of RAM, 16 gigs of ROM, 4080 mAh battery, and a dual camera. That's 13 megapixels with a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Now, the screen itself, as you can see, isn't exactly anything to write home about. It's 1280 by 600, which is very low resolution. But for the money you're paying, I guess you can't really expect too much. And just remember, before we open this up, make sure you always prevail in kind. So, yeah, the box isn't too bad. It's a nice presentation. When you open it up inside, we see we have the phone here with a protective screen cover on top. Just again, reinforcing the specs of the phone. I've gone for the, the blue model here. You can buy a green instead of black or a gold version, but I thought I'd go for the blue version here. And just quick look over the phone. Nice sort of shiny blue here. It comes with a pre-installed sort of jelly TPU case, which is a nice thing to have. It doesn't exactly line up perfectly with its cutouts, but I guess it's a £50 phone, so we need to just remember that. So we have the micro USB here for charging and data at the bottom. We've got a 3.5mm headphone jack at the top. No buttons at all down the side, and we have the power and the volume rocker on the right hand side. Here we have the front facing camera in its water drop style notch effect here. And you can see the screen doesn't uh, go all the way to the bottom here, but it is slightly rounded at the corners. So I'm just going to take this off. So this is a plastic back here see the dual camera set up there and what we're going to do is get to the back of the phone now here at the bottom right of the phone you can see a little indent where you can pop your nail in and start peeling away the back of the phone because this case has a removable back So I'd recommend running your thumb or thumbnail along the bottom here and then you can easily take this off. So here we are inside the phone. Now the battery here is in theory removable but you'd have to contact the manufacturer to actually get a replacement, you can't just buy those. And here at the top we see the dual SIM setup, so I've already put my SIM card in here in SIM slot 1, we have another SIM slot over here and we have a micro SD slot on the right there. So other than that, once you've popped your SIM in and your memory card, if you wish, just clip it back together and we'll take the screen protector off and we'll boot the phone up. So whilst this is loading, as you can see, it's powered by Android Go. That's running 8.1 Oreo, which is the latest version of Android Go available for this phone. Now, Android Go is basically a cut down version or a more restrictive version of Android, which is very uh, sort of restrictive on the amount of apps that can run in memory. It's quite uh, ruthless with its memory management just because this has only got one gig of RAM. Now it's running a ARM Cortex A7 at 1300 megahertz, 1.3 gigahertz, and that's a four core processor. And the GPU is a ARM Mali 400 MP2 with two cores. So it's not exactly the most recent of, uh, hardware inside. But again, this phone was released last year and it is a 50 pound phone. So again, you can't really expect too much for 50 pounds. Right, I'll just have a quick look at what else is included in the box here. 
So underneath we have a VIP card with some details about his sort of a warranty. We've got a instruction manual here, which is telling you different sections of the phone, how to insert your SIM card, how to send SMS, etc. We've got a thank you card. We have our charging wall adapter here, five volts, one amp. So it's a very basic standard USB charger. And we have our standard micro USB cable. Nothing else in the box, no headphones or anything. That's all you get. So as you saw in the instructions there, this does have a notification LED. It's in the top left of the phone screen. You can't see it without it being turned on. So you can see here with the phone charging, the LED indicator is up there. So yeah, if you receive a message or a missed notification, you do get the LED up here at the top and you can also disable it. So as I said previously, the screen is only 1280 by 600. So we haven't even got uh, HD resolution capabilities on the screen itself. So just bear that in mind. And what we're gonna do is just go through what is pre-installed and just try and understand exactly what you get with Android Go. So you'll get these pre-installed uh, Google apps here. So YouTube Go, Maps Go. Now these are basically cut down versions of the full apps that are available. And basically they're meant to save data as much as possible because this is meant for people with a limited data plan. So probably people just running off their mobile network rather than Wi-Fi. But you can of course just install the full blown applications as well if you wish. So you do have the option, but if we open up one of the uh, Go apps, we'll just have a quick look and see how it's different. Okay, so there's not a huge amount of difference on the front screen here, but you can tell that you have less options. So you have home and downloads and you can access the ability to share your downloads with anyone nearby. You can search and obviously go into your account here. The main thing you'll notice when you click on a video is you get these options here to choose the streaming quality. So you can see exactly how much data it's gonna use up and then you can play the video if you agree with those sort of date settings. So we'll click on another video here and we can see the different rates here. So that's basically Android Go. It's cut down versions of the apps that you already know and it's just to try and help you save data as much as possible. So performance wise, it's not fast. I'm not gonna lie, it's usable. And as a backup phone, I think it'd be absolutely fine. For a phone for a child who just wants to play a few basic games, it, again, it's fine. And maybe one you could just keep in your glove box in your car. If you, you know, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, your phone dies and you need a map, then you could just pop this out and you've got your 4,000 milliamp hour battery and you've got Maps Go, which will run pretty quickly and get you out of a tight situation. Again, you can see the speed of the phone, not exactly the quickest, but it does get there in the end. Now Maps Go actually runs inside a Chrome window, but you do get most of the features that you get from the normal maps. But again, like I said, you can just download the full app instead and use that. Then at least you have the option to save maps offline. Okay, so it comes pre-installed with the Google keyboard and the response. The vibrations actually appear a bit after you've touched it, so I'd probably turn those off. But yeah, in comparison to a more expensive phone, the screen to touch isn't as nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna test out the uh, rear facing speaker here to see how it sounds. Now I've done some calls with it and it did sound a bit tinny. It did blast the speaker a bit as well with voice that I had going the other day. So I'm just gonna try it with a video and we'll just see how it sounds. So remember, if you're holding the phone like this, for example, your top right finger could cover the speaker somewhat, unless you hold it like this, in which case it should allow the sound to escape. 
Again, if you're holding like this, you're going to be covering it slightly whilst in your hands, but let's just give it a go and see what it's like. Right, next up we have Multistar. Now this is quite a nice little application which allows you to open apps which shouldn't normally be allowed to be opened in split screen view, in split screen view. So once you've enabled this and enabled the multi window to all apps. So you can see once it's in the loudest possible setting, it does blast the speaker out a bit too much and it makes it uh, quite sort of muffled and not, not great. But normal listening levels are absolutely fine. So you can see here, whilst I'm watching this video, it seems to be having some problems registering screen presses. And we can see here the maximum resolution we can set for this video is 480p. Right, so let's try another video application such as Twitch. And you can see, it plays the video fine. But it does struggle when you rotate slightly, so we're just going to remove the chat. Okay, now what I have noticed is if you try and increase the quality to 720p, for example, it really does start to struggle to play. So I would probably leave it on 480p. whilst watching videos on Twitch as well. Okay, so I'll just try out a few games. We've got Mobile Legends here. So you can see it's slightly laggy whilst loading characters, etc. But we've selected that now, so we'll try and get into the game. Now, you can see actually there's a pre-installed screen protector here, including some bubbles. So there's one there, there's a bubble here. You can't quite, oh, you can just about see it there. So there are some pre-installed bubbles on the protector, so you probably want to remove that. It's probably not helping the screen uh, sensitivity either. But what I found uh, whilst testing this for several hours is that as soon as you have loaded into a game, it does actually run okay. So obviously all the settings for this game are set to the lowest possible. So yeah, completely playable. Slight bit of lag every now and again when there's a lot of action happening, but uh, yeah, you wouldn't have any problems. It does take a while to load up. The storage is a bit slow on this phone, but uh, other than that, uh, pretty good. Okay, so I'm just gonna run the memory cleanup here and then we'll try Asphalt 8. Asphalt 9 isn't compatible currently with this phone. So this is the latest Asphalt we can try. And we're using the tilt controls here. Not uh, very well, obviously. So yeah, that seems to run pretty well. You can tell it's not obviously uh, 60 frames per second, but uh, it's definitely uh, more than playable. Okay, so another game that people may buy this phone for, for their children, is Roblox. Now, I've set the quality settings here to the very lowest possible, and it is still a bit laggy, especially when people are loading in or the levels are loading up. Now, once you're in a smallish game like this one I'm playing here, it's not terrible, but it still is obviously noticeably laggy. So just bear that in mind if you are buying this for your child for a bit of Roblox, 
they will have to only be able to play or they will only be able to play sort of very basic games so you can see now that we've moved outside it's struggling a bit more to cope Okay, so we'll load up another Roblox game and I'll just show you uh, the speed. Okay, I've had to mute this one because someone's playing some horrendous music from their boombox. But yeah, you can see here, this game here is really not playable whatsoever. So again, very, very basic Roblox games should be okay. But anything more, you know, open world like this with a big map is going to be running at about, uh, what's this, about three or four frames per second. Okay, more basic games such as Candy Crush work absolutely fine. Again, the load speed is a bit slow. But once you're in, it's absolutely fine. Okay, so how about simple web browsing? And by default, we're going to the Blackview homepage here. So we'll just have a quick scroll. You can see how fast it loads. Now this is quite a feature rich front page. There's lots of videos and lots of pictures. So you can see it's struggling somewhat. Let's just start with one of the videos loading. Okay, so we're just on the BBC News website here. And you can see performance is pretty good. It takes a few moments to load up the images, but uh, definitely more than usable. slow to rotate to landscape mode but once it's there it seems uh, seems okay okay I'm just gonna do a phone call and just put it on the speakerphone so you can hear the quality of the calls that you can get through this now this does only run with 2g or 3g there's no 4g at all on this phone so that's another thing to bear in mind so yeah, I'm just going to do a quick call and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, so this is just a test of the speakerphone. This is on the maximum possible output on the speakerphone. And I'm pointing the uh, speaker on the rear of the phone towards my microphone just to see how good or bad the quality is. So hopefully this will give you a bit of an idea as to the sound quality you get from this rear speaker. Like I said previously, the sound, the voices just seem a bit muffled or broken when played at large or high volumes that is and I think that's a bit of a shame really because when you're playing a tiny bit lower it doesn't quite blow the speaker out but anything higher than you know just over midway it does seem to blow the speaker and it doesn't sound too good. Okay so I'm phoning from the Blackview A60 so you get a bit of an idea of the quality of the microphone inside the phone itself. Hopefully it sounds decent. It says it's in HD on the screen itself. So whether it's trying to use Wi-Fi calling or something, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, this is just a quick test to see what the quality is like from the phone itself. Okay, so like I said, whilst on the phone, you can see it's actually saying HD here. So whether that's using Wi-Fi or whether it's just because it's on the 3G network, it's saying 3G uh, HD, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, we also get the option here to record calls. So yeah, the phone quality itself is actually pretty good, apart from the rear speaker where it just completely sounds horrific. Um, but for normal calls through the earpiece or through a Bluetooth headset or a wired headset, it's absolutely fine. Okay, so last but not least, I'm going to just go through the camera modes here and we'll take some photos, I'll take some videos outside and we'll just see how the phone compares. So we have obviously the video mode. This can shoot in 720p video. The focusing 
works. It's not the fastest in the world, but as you can see, it does work. So yeah, like I say, 720p recording, you don't get much, uh, many other options other than that. You can decide whether to turn the microphone on or off, which is a nice little feature. And whether or not to saw the location, that's all you get in the settings for the video. You get the face beauty mode for the rear camera as well as the front camera. Obviously the standard photo mode. You can get your sort of nice bokeh effect, which actually uh, looks quite good. Now, after the phone's taken a photo, you have to wait a short while, but uh, yeah, you get a nice uh, array of options there. You get a monotone photo. Let's take one here. You can do a panorama photo, or you can even go to the pro settings and have a play around with the white balance and the exposure settings. So yeah, I'm going to take it outside, do some recording, and we'll come back and see how it fares. Hi, it's John here with a quick test of the Blackview A60. I'm just doing some video testing here. This is running at the maximum 720p resolution. And this will hopefully just give you a bit of an idea as to what the voice capturing is like. And also, well, obviously there's a bit of a lack of uh, video stabilisation, but see what the colours are like on the final version. Seems to be picking up the sky quite well. Some good blues on the screen at least. So it'll be interesting to see what this is like when it gets paid back. Okay, so I thought I'd do a, a front video test here. Gotta keep an eye on where I'm walking, because there's a lot of dog poo around. But uh, yeah, from what I can tell, it's not too bad. It's, it looks like it's a four by three screen ratio, but uh, other than that, looks pretty clear. Okay, so what I've noticed is in decent light, this is actually quite a reasonable camera. Again, you haven't got the resolution, but uh, 50 pounds, can't really complain. Here we have up to two times digital zoom. I'll be interested to see what the noise cancellation is like. So it's a bit breezy today, but other than that, I think it's um, rather pleasant. So there we have it, that was the Blackview A60. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. And I will see you again in the next one.